We're now going to look at using CircuitWorks to build an entire assembly from our RDF file rather than just building an individual part file. So again, in SolidWorks, if I select Open ECAD file, browse to the cell phone example we've been using, this is an RDF3 file, click OK. It opens in the CircuitWorks user interface. And if I look on the left hand side, I can see some of these components have already been modelled. Because they have notable styles, they already exist in the CircuitWorks component library. But some of these components, but most of these components, have little styles on, so CircuitWorks knows nothing about them. So if I tell CircuitWorks to build the entire assembly, to build a model of the board, components, keypad areas, annotations, it's going to need to model all these components because they don't already exist. So in order to build the assembly, I can either select Tools, Build a SolidWorks Assembly, or I can click this icon to build an assembly from the CircuitWorks data. So if I click the icon, what I'll get is a message. I'll either get uh, summary warnings or some information telling me everything's OK to continue. In this case, CircuitWorks is telling me that the board contains eight zero height components, which it will model as 2D sketches. Well, I can either go back at this stage, I could cancel this dialog and go back and add a height, as we've seen earlier, or I can just, piss, just press the build button and continue and build the board. There's a whole host of warnings CircuitWorks could show here. For example, if the board contained 30,000 holes, you'd get a warning up saying, there's an awful lot of holes in this file, it's going to take a very long time to build it in CircuitWorks, maybe you should consider going back and using some filtering to get rid of some of the holes. Same if there are a lot of components, if there are a huge amount of new components. So CircuitWorks basically gives you this advice before it builds a model in SolidWorks to tell you if there are any issues that perhaps you should go back and look at before continuing to build the model. In this case, I'm just going to ignore this warning. I don't mind that my zero height components are going to come in at 2D sketches. I'm going to press the build button to continue. So CircuitWorks minimizes, and I get this window that's telling me what's going on. So you can see from the background, it's actually building a SolidWorks model of the board, and each one of these icons is a new part being built. In the background in SolidWorks, it's building models for all those components it didn't have. All the components that were marked with a little star are being built now in the background in SolidWorks, and added to the component library. So as this is the first time I built most of these components, it's going to take quite a while because it needs in this case to build 81 component models. If I was to run this model again and process the same IDF file for a second time, it would be virtually instantaneous because all the models would already exist in the component library. But on this occasion this is the first time that any of these part files have been encountered, any of these uh, components have been encountered, CircuitWorks is going to need to build a model for every single one. As it's shown currently, there's no display in the background of the components being built. That's the CircuitWorks option. If you want to see CircuitWorks building the models, you can actually watch it construct the models in the background. In this case, I've turned it off because it makes CircuitWorks run faster if the component modeling isn't displayed because of the graphic update takes some time. OK, it's now built the models it needs. What it's now doing is adding all those components together and uh, making the assembly. And here we go. So if I close these forms, if I just get CircuitWorks out of the way for a second, you can see this is what we're ending up with. We've now got a SolidWorks assembly file showing the board components. If I zoom in, you can see the plated holes here. We've got the silver plating on the inside of them. We've got our components on the board. We've got the annotations. And this area here, to the top left, shown translucent. This is a keep out area. This has been added. Again, this is an option how you want to show these. But in this case, we've added it as a translucent envelope. So you can see that's an area that shouldn't have components in it. So it's being indicated as a keep out area. Now in this case, the components are floating. That's an option because I want to move some of the components later. I can either bring the components in as fixed or floating. I can either have the data the geometry creates as constrained or unconstrained. So if we look a bit closer at this model, you'll see some of these components, such as this pink component here, aren't very detailed models, and others, such as this IC, are detailed models. And that's because this is a model that CircuitWorks has created itself. CircuitWorks has created this pink component using the data in the IDF file. So it's got the footprint, it's got the height, and it's built a model as best it can using the limited amount of information available to it. This component, the IC, is one that's been modelled manually. You can either do this by modelling a component from scratch, or you could take a model that CircuitWorks had built and then add more data to it, add more information to make it look more detailed. 
Again, which approach you use, use depends entirely on what you want to do with the IDF file with the CircuitWorks model once it's been created. If you want to use the CircuitWorks model for a photorealistic rendering, then obviously you're going to be more interested in the components looking like this. If you're going to use it for analysis or space constraints for doing maybe finite element analysis, then it's going to make more sense to have the models in this form, in the simple form, because obviously you'll end up with a much uh, less detailed model. So if you want to mesh it, something like that for a thermal analysis, it'll be more simple. So now we've got our model, let's have a quick look back at the component library. If we go to CircuitWorks Tools Component Library and bring the component library back up, you'll now see there's a lot more components in the component library. We've now got 80 components in the component library as opposed to just the few we had to start with. And all these components have just been modelled now and added to the component library automatically by CircuitWorks. So what this is telling us is that next time we process either the same IDF file or an IDF file that contains these components, that CircuitWorks will already have these models in its library, so it won't have to go to the trouble of building them for a second time. If I maximize the CircuitWorks window again, you can see the same thing. You can see now every component in the tree is missing its star. There are no stars on any one of these components because it knows that the components now exist in its library. They don't have that little star that indicates they're a new component that CircuitWorks has to build. So now if I was to process the same IDF file again, it would take a matter of seconds rather than a matter of minutes. Now once we've got our CircuitWorks data built as a SOLIDWORKS model, it's not just a dumb SOLIDWORKS model, there's actually ECAD data embedded inside this SOLIDWORKS model. And there are a number of tools we can use to manipulate the data and do some quite clever things inside CircuitWorks and we're going to take a look at those next.